America, I realized that the apple didn't fall too far from the tree, that I too wanted to be self-employed like my father, that I wanted to live my life on my own terms, and that I had a gift in me, and I didn't want to rely on society or corporate America to tell me when I could have a vacation, how much money I would make, mm -hmm. what my hours would be. And the breakthrough came for me in 1984. My father had a heart attack and he asked me to come and be with him in Washington, D.C. where I was born. And I said, Daddy, I can't get off from work. And he said, what do you mean you can't get off? And it was like a tipping point for me to realize that I was a slave on someone's plantation. Mm -hmm. And I don't say that to put down anyone that works for someone else, but in my mindset, it was an alarm clock that if I can't do the things that are important to me, that I am enslaved. If I'm not free to attend to what my priorities were, which has always been family, that I'm enslaved at some point. And I realized that there was a trade-off of becoming self-employed, and I've been self-employed ever since. Uh, hit it. Thank you. It has been Thank you. A, a very challenging, a challenging journey, but also very rewarding. Um, and so I love speaking into others' lives to share a little bit about my story, and hopefully you'll be able to say, you know what? If she could do it, I could do it. Um, sometimes we need someone who looks like us, mm -hmm. who understands us, mm -hmm. that relates to us, mm -hmm. that gives us permission to take our lives to the next level. Is there anybody here today that wants to take their life to another level? Is, is there anybody mm -hmm. saying it's got to be more? It got to be. Uh, is anybody <laughs> saying this ain't me? It, it ain't me. Okay. <laughs> well, well mm -hmm. that's where I was in the 80s. And so I kicked the glass ceiling. There are, there are thousands of cracks in the female glass ceiling that says all you can be is a teacher or a nurse or a housewife. So I was one of the first to the glass ceiling to say I wanted to be a motivational speaker. Now that's evolved over the past few years to where I'm not just a motivational speaker because I believe everyone must be self-motivated. Mm -hmm. That all I can do is inspire. Mm -hmm. And so I'm also a, a counselor and they call it now in society a coach. coach. So mm -hmm. coach slash counselor. Um, <laughs> And I'm a seasoned woman now. In my 60 plus years, I realized that I can pour into others' lives, that I've learned so much as a wife, learned so much as a mother, learned so much as a daughter, a grieving daughter, the good, dutiful daughter, the sad daughter, the daughter of a depressed mother who became a depressed mother, who broke through depression to find that, that, that as a woman, I wasn't just seeking men or seeking money, I was seeking meaning. Mm -hmm. I needed to know what was I here for? What was my purpose? And I realized that I was a generation, the first generation of women that had the luxury to ask that question. I realized I was standing on the shoulders of women that were suppressed in so many ways. They didn't have time to go to retreats or get mm -hmm. their nails done mm -hmm. or um, you know, be belong to a book club. They didn't have that luxury. They didn't have the luxury of saying, I